Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners, the hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends Dedeker and Jace teach me a born and raised atheist all about the Bible. I guess there really hasn't been too much teaching these days. I'm just going to be honest with you all. (laughs) Really? Oh, you feel like you've learned so much now. (laughs) I think it's more just that we are learning together. That Mm -hmm. many of the things that first I, I didn't know about what it means to be a Christian... I've learned some now. I I won't ever have like a touchstone personally, but I've learned a lot of what you have taught me about that. And I feel like I can fake it real good. Like you've even said, you could probably fake Mm. it real good now. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I've I've been very impressed at the times when you've, Mm. Let yourself go there. I could see yeah. you giving giving an inspiring sermon or something like that for sure. About that, but thank you. <laughs> no, thank I, you. I think you could. I think if I do think if mm-hmm. we just got you just a little more drunk and <laughs> and gave you a theme. Yeah. I think if we gave you a theme, mm. maybe if we were yeah. like, hey, Emily, pontificate on the topic of uh, planets. <laughs> Yeah, planets. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. And Yahweh. Yeah. Come on, on the topic of sex and religion shrines and mm. how that might yeah. be relevant in this modern day world. Oh, boy. I, I think you could do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, indeed. I think that would be fine. Maybe that'll be our next podcast. We'll see. All right. I forgot. Just like a, like a fake podcast. Yeah, I was talking to these two about the fact that we have a a timeline now like a t- uh, an end date for this whole project of ours. And it's really remarkable that we've been doing it for, you know, five years. Five years? Yeah. Yeah, five years. Yeah, 20, 2018. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, we're almost done with the first part of this. And I'm I'm really excited to be like turning a new chapter, as it were. A yeah. new whole new book. New energy. A whole yeah. new testament. A whole new, a whole testament. new testament. Yeah, just for you. Yeah, exactly. You might say. <laughs> Yeah, my partner was like, ah, oh, you're almost to those brand new testies. It's going to be great. Yep. Ew. <laughs> I know. I was like, yeah, yep, we're so almost sure. to the new testies. Brand new pair for y'all. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, wow. wow, wow, wow. Does anyone remember what happened? This well, was two so, weeks ago. Ugh. Yeah, rocking on in the chat is reminding me that we had a long conversation about CD burning. Now, I don't mm. know. Yeah. I don't remember how that was relevant to what we read, but it did come up as in like CD mm-hmm. burning parties that you have mm-hmm. at youth group. Right. Great fun. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I have yeah, no idea what. Well, wait, no. It's because it's because they were getting all the stuff out of the temple. Remember, they cleaned it up right. and threw it all in the river yes. or the ravine or, or something like that. And okay. so I think that somehow inspired us to talk about cleaning up all your old CDs. secular CDs yeah. and burning right. them. Yeah. It's a good time. How could we forget? It did. <laughs> yeah. But no, like the, the actual story, like, do we know what happened there? Anyone? No. Wasn't Hezekiah. The man, Zakiah, maybe responsible for that in yeah. particular. The king, maybe, maybe. I thought Hezekiah was the king that was like so cool, who cleaned it all up and okay. spruced it back to its former glory. And Yahweh oh, yeah. loved him, and it was great. I think Hezekiah is the king of the time. That looks correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, given uh, what we're going to read today. Yes, I think we're still with Hezekiah. Okay, I think this first chapter is still going to be Hezekiah. Yeah, yeah. So. In preparation for the fact that next week is going to be the end of Whoa. the Old Testament and the Hebrew Bible, which is just mind-blowing to think about, I was doing some research earlier today on Bible. What I was trying to find were like example tests or exams from actual seminaries that had like Old Testament courses. Holy crap. That sounds extremely difficult, <laughs> Jace. I'm not well, the best test taker, well, as we found out. It sounds like there's going to be some essay questions. Oh, I love that. No, yeah, yeah, so, you, you do those ones. <laughs> Thank you. So it was interesting. We'll just have ChatGPT do the essays for us. Um, 
No, what was interesting in looking into this was, I guess, like how varied the descriptions of them were. I couldn't find any actual tests that were takeable, like that actually had examples of the questions. But I did find one from, where is this from? The Jacksonville Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. I, I'm sorry, the Jacksonville? Jacksonville? The Jackson, Jamie, Gordon uh, Goldberg, Conwell. Presley, what? <laughs> Jacksonville, Gordon Conwell, Gordon Ramsey Theological Seminary. Gordon Ramsey's Theological Seminary. Got it. Got <laughs> yes, it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. There's a whole new meaning to Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> so I found, yeah, Dude. I found a a syllabus for an Old Testament 500 is the name of this course. What? Um, it's a survey of the Old Testament, like a 500 level 500 college level, course. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, which which also We're was not in Kansas anymore. Which was interesting to <laughs> no, me. We're in Jacksonville. <laughs> there you go. That you don't actually read the whole ding dang thing until you're at like the 500 level. So <laughs> well, like that tells us something. I maybe. mean, the 101 level is not reading this shit. Okay, like they got to really get into the minutia, mm-hmm. the stuff that nobody wants to read at the 500 level. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. but so what I was curious about though was just to look through and kind of get a sense of what what it's even about, right? And so there's some other books besides just reading all of the Old Testament. There's also some supplemental, you know, books and and things. And it's a theological seminary, right? So there's also going to be a lot of like uh, you know, interpretation of the meaning of things and stuff that we've kind of tried to avoid a little bit on this show, I guess. But what was interesting to me, and I think actually felt a little bit vindicating based on how badly we did on our first, our our second Chronicles, or sorry, first Chronicles Chronicles. quiz that we did, is this. They have this Old Testament survey final exam study guide. And they have a list of, what is it? Like six things that you don't need to know. Oh, and so, okay, good. Was so, it like chronicle, we got that. first chronicles, also <laughs> right. second chronicles? So, so number one, you'll not be required to know the structure of Old Testament books. So, like the you know this book is divided into three sections and that kind of stuff. Yeah, you'll not be required to know the dates for the kings of Israel, oh, except for some great. specific ones that are on the midterm. But so I don't have that for context. But you don't need to know dates. You do not need to know the entire list of kings. Great. Which I was like, okay, great. Love that. Great. You will not be required to know something about every king, but you will be required to know something about a few main kings. See below. And there's a list of the ones you need to know about. Okay. 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 Let's see. You should be able to answer questions related to content, themes, historical content, key people, and events for every single book of the Old Testament, but there'll be multiple choice. So I'm like, okay, okay. Okay. You need to identify quotations from a particular book, which again, that one's rough, especially with that's, translations. That's, yeah, that's tough And you'll be required to answer some certain particular questions. So this is where we get into like the specific people and things that we should know about. Mm-hmm. And so one is like basic information about the major covenants in the Bible. So that's the Noahic, Abrahamic, Mosaic, and Davidic covenants. Okay. Which I was like, I don't know if I could tell you the differences between those. So maybe that's something we'd learn in seminary school. You need to know, okay, the five northern kings you need to know are Jeroboam the first, Ahab, Jehu, Pekah. Pekah? And Hosea. Oh, Pekah's in there, huh? Wow, surprising. And then you need Did to know... We, we haven't even talked about some of those, though, this time around. I think we have, and we just kind of breezed past it. Wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, and then you need to know about 11 of the southern kings. Whew. So that's, that's Saul, ton. but it's going all the way back to Saul, right? Okay. So Saul, Duh. David, yes. Solomon, no problem. Duh. And then Jehoshaphat, Rehoboam, okay. Ahaz, Hezekiah, who I guess we're on now, Manasseh, Josiah, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. Are we going to deal with the rest of those in the next two days I worth guess, of podcasting? Because, okay. Yeah, I guess so. We're going to still blow past them. And then you also need to know, you also need to be able to identify the other kings, what king they were. So the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and the Persians. So you need to know that the Assyrians were Tiglath Pilsner. Shalmaneser and Sargon II, which I'm like, I do not remember that name at all. <laughs> the Babylonian kings are Nebuchadnezzar, mm-hmm. Belshazzar, and Nabonidus. 
Nabonidus, which I do not remember. And then the Persian kings, which is Cyrus the Great, Darius the First, Xerxes the First, and Artaxerxes. I remember Artaxerxes. Very important. So what was interesting, though, was in reading this, I was like, you know, if we studied for an exam and kind of knew we had to study these, I think we could I think we could do it. Well, sure, if we studied. I think the problem is we blow past it while inebriated. And so, yeah. yes, we don't... <laughs> We're not really like, yeah. you know, retaining this information extremely well. It's kind of However, getting in there a bit. State-dependent memory. Uh-huh. So perhaps mm. if we were inebriated when we also took the test. Okay. Although we usually it would be are. It's easier to recall. This yeah, we were we the most inebriated then. <laughs> That's true. That's My mom true. is like, I suggest you start taking notes in the chat. <laughs> That's definitely something so anyway, that I'm not going to be doing in addition to reading and drinking. But thank yeah. you, yes. I wanted to give you a little overview. We still need to figure out what exactly we want to do in terms of quizzes or like final exams for the Old Testament before we promote ourselves to going on to this new testy. But yes. I just wanted to give you a little overview of some things to think about. Are you ready for this? Well, wait, well, what we are you drinking? About, we, yeah, talk about oh. drinks. Oh, yeah. Do it, Jace. Uh, yeah, I'm having um, a Mezcal, actually. Mm. And I left the bottle in the other room, so I can't tell you the name of it. But it is... It's like the, 400 conejos. It's 400 rabbits. Conejos. Conejos? Okay. Whatever a rabbit yeah, is. Sure. And it's the smokiest... Mezcal ever. It's like almost too smoky to drink. Will there be some left so I can try it when I get there? Uh, yeah, it'll be here. You can try it. Going to Seattle. I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> next, this weekend. Uh, exciting. Lovely. Dedeker, how about you? Well, Is that it? You're just having Mezcal like in a glass with ice? Uh, on the rocks, Emily, yeah. Emily, the Damn. cupboards are pretty bare over here. <laughs> There's it. not okay. much. You're like, what do we got? Yeah. Along that lines, I just mixed vodka into an Earl Grey flavored kombucha and it's actually quite nice and refreshing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there what about you? you? <laughs> uh, I went a little bit more exciting. So this is a uh, pomegranate Paloma. I had fresh grapefruit and then fresh pomegranate seeds that I muddled. Hmm. And then put it with some grapefruit soda on top and tequila. Beautiful. I used up the rest of the tequila and lime juice and a little bit of agave. And it's so good. Beautiful. Yeah, it sounds mm. delicious. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You ready now? Should we Let's do, do it? it? Is it the time? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Today, we're continuing on with our penultimate episode wow. of Second Chronicles and of the Old Testament. Today, we are reading Second Chronicles chapters 32 through 34. And then some wisdom from the book of Proverbs, chapter number 18. As we get started, we want to remind everyone to read responsibly and drink responsibly. You can drink along with us, or you can listen to us while you're in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. And with that, we're going to get started with Second Chronicles, chapter 32. After these things and this faithfulness, Sennacherib, Sennach- is it Sennacherib or do we do- want to go with Sennacherib? Oh, they both are That's good. how I would pronounce it. Probably not even that well, but I'm yeah. I'm going to say Sennacherib. King of Syria came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fortified cities and thought to win them for himself. Oh, he thought, he did think. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the springs which were outside of the city, and they helped him. Uh, Smart. That's good thinking. So there was gathered much people together, and they stopped all the springs and the brook that flowed through the midst of the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Yeah, why would we want them to find water? (laughs) Why indeed? He took courage and built up all the wall that was broken down and raised it up to the towers and the other wall outside and strengthened Milo in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. He set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the broad place at the gate of the city and spoke comfortably to them. 
Uh, he pulled up an easy chair. <laughs> I was thinking he, he like, like flipped the chair around backward and kind of leaned oh, up I on the back that. of it. Oh, I love that. Love that. Yeah, youth pastor style. Everyone, wait, is that a youth pastor thing? I think it was just a 90s think, thing. Okay. I don't know. I think stereotypically could be a youth pastor mm, thing. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, like trying that. to connect with the youths. Yeah, the youths. Yeah. He spoke comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, mm -hmm. nor for all the multitude who is with him, for there is greater with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is Yahweh our God to help us and to fight our battles. The people rested themselves on the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. They all sat backwards in their chairs after that. <laughs> after this, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servants to Jerusalem, now he was before Lachish and all his power with him. To Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all of Judah who were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do you trust that you abide the siege in Jerusalem? Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give you over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, Yahweh our God will deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars? He has. He has. And commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar, and on it shall you burn incense? Don't you know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the lands? Were the gods of the nations of the lands in any wise able to deliver their land out of my hand? What? Could have Sorry, said that in a much clearer what did way. He say? But Just there. <laughs> he's he's making like, do you know who I am? Do you know how much Got we've it. messed up everyone who's lived here? Like, has anyone's so God ever prevented us from mm. destroying them and taking what we want? Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. The, the message here is saying, like, can you name one God among all these nations that have stopped me? Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay. God, cool the pressure flex. of a name. Now, therefore, don't let Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you after this manner, neither believe you him, for no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand and out of the hand of my fathers. How much less shall your God deliver you out of my hand? Mm. His servants spoke yet more against Yahweh God and against his servant Hezekiah. Oh, sorry, hold on. I just noticed in the message that verse 16 there says, the messengers felt free to throw in their personal comments. Uh, oh, did they? Okay. <laughs> okay. How did that go for them? Oh, yes. Yeah, to throw in their personal comments, putting down both God and God's servant, Hezekiah. So he's like, kind of feel free to sprinkle in your own, your own Just burns. Just whatever you want. Just really let them Just have no it. Problem. Yeah. It's all good. Just do a real roast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> He wrote also letters to rail on Yahweh, the God of Israel, Oof. and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of the lands which have not delivered their people out of my hand, mm. so shall the God of Hezekiah not deliver his people out of my mm. hand. Okay. Oof. Yikes. They cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten them and to trouble them that they might take the city. They spoke of the God of Jerusalem as of the gods of the peoples of the earth, which are the work of men's hands, Oof, which Yahweh does not like being put in that same mm -hmm. camp. No, I remember mm -hmm. this scene, I think, from when we read it in Second Kings, where I think this is the one where like the messengers came out to greet them and they're like, hey, hey, no, we speak Assyrian or Babylonian, whatever it is that you speak, let's do that instead. And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're doing this in the Hebrew language so that everyone can hear these sick mm. burns that we're doing. Okay. Right. Yeah. Hezekiah the king and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Oh, we oh. know that guy. Is this the same Isaiah, I, the son I of Amos? I'm. He wasn't the son of Amos, was he? Who is he the son of? I remember oh, the name boy. Amos. <laughs> like, yeah, because that's a last name of a figure skater, so I remember that name. <laughs> okay. Great. Good. I feel like it was the same guy, the same Isaiah. Uh, no? let's see here. Isaiah, Isaiah. Who is your father, Isaiah? Amos, yeah, that's him. Yeah, wow, the same Isaiah, same. cool. Yeah, uh, and who do we cast as Isaiah? Just so we have a little bit of a, yeah. uh, a word picture here. Uh, that was Lin Manuel Miranda, <laughs> right? That oh, was the musical. That wow. was the musical book. Oh, great! <laughs> Love it. Good. Good. <laughs> okay, this is great. Always good to see him, see our buddy Lin come back. Yeah, Lin's great. Okay. Hezekiah the king and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, prayed because of this and cried to heaven. Yahweh sent an angel 
who oh. cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh boy, when he was come into the house of his God, those who came forth from his own bowels killed him there with the sword. What? Okay, Wait, okay, did hold they on. mean his children? His children, yeah. Like from his loins? The little children. Okay, well, hold on. I want to back up because okay. I feel like we did all this buildup of, Hez- or not of Hezekiah, but the king of the Assyrians talking trash about how Yahweh's not going to save them. And then she's like, oh yeah, Yahweh sent an angel and took care of it. And that all gets wrapped up in one verse. I really want to know how this angel, like what mm. actually he happened. He took care of it with the sword. <laughs> took care of it. It says yeah. that he killed him with the sword, right? <laughs> Okay, but then this bowels thing, does the message clarify that at all? Uh, yeah, that it's his sons. That is, oh. when he came back to his own temple in I defeat, think, his sons killed him. Because they were like, dude, you you sucked. You suck. Yeah. I think they conflate bowels with loins, even though we know today that those are two <laughs> very different holes. <laughs> or is it, hold on, is it that because these are our enemies, we imply that they poop out their babies? Oh, that's okay, fine. Yeah, maybe it's a, a sick burn kind of worked in so, there. So we're continuing the burn. <laughs> Got okay. it. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thus, Yahweh saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. Many brought gifts to Yahweh to Jerusalem and precious things to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. Thenceforth is great. In those yeah. days. What a word. Fence, thenceforth. <laughs> Do you think that's a real word? Yeah. It is in I've this book. I've seen that before. I've, I've seen that but word you before. have? As in different from henceforth? Where? <laughs> when? <laughs> Well, yeah, so henceforth is like of course, from, henceforth. from now, like from here, henceforth from now, and thenceforth is from then. <laughs> that makes sense in theory, but I've never seen that word in my life <laughs> until this exact, I don't either exact have moment. I. Thank you, Dedeker. Thenceforth. <laughs> thenceforth. Yeah, I just looked it up. From that time, place, or point onward. Yeah, okay. It is... World English Bible. Okay, so instead of saying from then on, now we have to say from thenceforth. Great. I'll definitely yada, yada, work yada, that yada. into okay. my vocabulary. <laughs> I'm in favor. That sounds uh-huh. way, way cooler to say that. Yeah. In those days, Hezekiah was sick, even to death, and he prayed to Yahweh, and he spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah didn't render again according to the benefit done to him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore, there was wrath on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. What? I feel like we just had a sudden turn of fortune. Yeah, why did that happen to him? He didn't render again according to the benefit done on him? What What does that mean? That could mean anything. Oh, Oh, I see. Okay, the message is helping me understand a little bit here. This is saying that... <sighs> Good, thank God. So... Yeah, so he became sick and he prayed to God and was given a reassuring sign. But instead of being grateful, it made him arrogant. And like, instead of being thankful and humble. So it says, yeah, but the sign, instead of making Hezekiah grateful, made him arrogant. This made God angry. And his anger <laughs> and God was like, never mind. Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> never mind. I take Zoink. it back. Yeah, I'm taking right. it back. <laughs> Zoink. <laughs> Zoink is good. That's Zoink. the sound of all of Yahweh's magic. Zoink. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of Yahweh didn't come on them in the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had exceeded much riches and honor, and he provided him treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of goodly vessels. Can I just say, like, this reminds me so much of Tears of the Kingdom. I bet all y'all out there are playing it too. Because like he's Why, just having a constantly overfilled inventory. Yeah, just like he's getting like <laughs> things like precious stones and you know mm. spices or like different things, different crafting Random materials, animal parts. Yeah, yeah like things and, and shields, like things that you need to beat this game, which is difficult but <laughs> awesome. Yeah, storehouses also for the increase of grain and new wine and oil and stalls for all manner of animals and flocks in folds. Of course, the sheepy folds. <laughs> Ugh. Love them. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him very much substance. This same Hezekiah also <laughs> this, stopped the this <laughs> very <laughs> same <laughs> this one this guy also stopped 
the upper spring of the waters of Gihon and brought them straight down on the west side of the city of David. Again, ancient waterways. I love them. Yeah, he, kinda, he did a big public works project. Yeah, maybe a little aqueduct kind of situation. Yeah. That's fun. Okay. Hezekiah prospered in all his works. However, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent to him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. Can you help with that one, Jace? Okay. Like he was testing him probably, like a bad boyfriend, <laughs> not telling him what he means. <laughs> but he tests him and then he doesn't pass the test and he's like, okay, I'm leaving you now. Bad. Is that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So this just says, so Hezekiah succeeded in everything he did. But when the rulers of Babylon sent emissaries to find out about the sign from God that had taken place earlier, God left him on his own to see what he would do. He wanted to test his heart. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Well, we never find out what happens because now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his good deeds, behold, Ah. they are written in the vision of Isaiah, Mm. the prophet, the son of Amos in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So in 2 Kings or 1 Kings or whatever kings? Or the book of Isaiah. Uh, Hezekiah slept with his fathers and they buried him in the ascent of the tombs of the sons of David and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death. Mm. Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Great. That's it. We'll see how Manasseh does. Good luck. So (laughs) something that jumped out to me is that like the way that the angel swooped in and just killed everyone, and they just kind of one paragraph. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that happened. Not even a paragraph, just a verse. A right. verse, exactly. So yeah. I, I went back and looked this up in Second Kings because I was like, I remember there being a lot more to this story, and there is. There's, oh. there's a ton more details. I mean, a ton is all relative with this book, but, you know. More than this, I would hope. Probably. Right. Well, so there was the whole thing about Hezekiah getting sick and, you know, being all worried about that and thinking he was going to die. And then Isaiah, you know, prays about it and leaves. And then God tells him, go back and tell him he's going to be okay. Like, there's like a lot more story beats that happened there. And then I think in Isaiah, we got even more details about it. So it is It is kind of making me think it'd be interesting to go back if you were studying this again, like you're in a course. <laughs> you would read all those near each other so you could kind of compare notes and flesh out the story Jace, better. you're a little too excited about this whole studying I for just, a course I thing. just want us to be, you know, certified seminary. Get our degrees, and di- our divinity degrees. <laughs> I do want us to get of our course. degrees. Yes. Of course. <laughs> it would be really funny, but but who has the time? Mm. Yeah. Who has the time or the money? Not us. I know. Unless some university is going to give us an honorary degree once we get to the end of this. And maybe someone out there (laughs) is connected to a chill-ass university. (laughs) A A chill-ass Christian university. (laughs) A chill-ass Christian university that would give us our... An honorary degree. Our degrees. An honorary degree in divinity. It's not going to be Grand Canyon University. (laughs) That, yeah, I, I met a princess in Hong Kong who went to Grand Canyon University, which is... No, hold on. Can we clarify? Not an actual real-life princess. But, a person who played a Disney princess. Yes, yes. And <laughs> their whole thing, like, I've seen their um, advertisements on TV, and it's private, Christian, affordable. That's their, like, tagline. Oh, that's the- <laughs> But <laughs> apparently, yeah, her partner, who's now her husband, had to take also two ring... What is it? Like, what, what is the thing that you did, Dedeker? What? To make sure that you don't have sex. Oh, the purity pledges. I, I like you explaining it, though. Purity, purity pledges, pledge? like ring uh. pledges, purity pledges. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, that's why we couldn't have sex before we were married. Because he right. took those purity pledges and he had to abide by them or else they would kick him out. <laughs> and I'm like, what? It's how, Christ- it's how Christian universities operate, yeah. wow. honestly. Wow. They kind of like to police every aspect of your yeah. life sometimes. Just, so just Shocking. So not so, that one is the moral yeah. of the story. We need a chill, a chill one for sure. Yeah, if anyone knows, let them know that we have been like embarked on this incredible <laughs> journey. <laughs> and, and we've learned so much. Yes. <laughs> so much. Yeah. So much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's continue on here with Second Chronicles uh, chapter 33. Yeah. Uh Manasseh. Now our new boy, Manasseh. Mm. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years. Wow. 
55 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. Oh boy. After the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places with which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. He was a baby. Like, what does he know? <laughs> and he reared up altars for the Baals and made Asherah uh. and worshipped all the host of the sky and served them. He built, he built altars in the house of Yahweh. He loved those bird gods. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he just loved birds. Mm, I see that. So the host of the sky you think is birds. That's mm. that's the vibes you get. Because um, mm. I was thinking like stars and moon. Oh. Sure, but I just stuff. like to, sh- to shake it up. Okay. You all know, right, right. like stars and the moon. People have been worshiping the stars and the moon for freaking ages. It's played out. Birds, Time though. for birds. New hotness. Birds. What kind of bird, okay. Dedeker? There are so many. Well, what like, was Are we that? talking oh. about a flamingo, which I love? No, I was randomly, for some reason, I was randomly thinking the other day, like way back in Exodus, or maybe in Deuteronomy, when they were like explaining which animals and which birds are okay to eat and which ones are not. None of them is my thing. There was a bird that was like a a hoopo, Uh a hoopo. It was like an Egyptian hoopo. I, for some reason, I kept thinking about the hoopo the other day. I don't even know what that looks like, but I'll look it up. They're really cute. If you Google H O O P O E S hoopos, they're really adorable. Um, <laughs> I'd worship that. Okay, all right. Who? Uh, oh! So he built See? altars. She did it. She oh Googled my it. goodness! Oh my oh, god! It's head. It. Ah! It's so cute. It looks like a zebra. Look it up, everyone. I know. Go look. I'm pretty sure you, you're not allowed to eat it. But obviously that's okay. not. You should definitely not eat that. <laughs> well, if you're if you're worshiping it, you shouldn't eat no, it. You shouldn't that eat doesn't. anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Sorry. Well, let me go back to okay. all the bad okay, things go. that Manasseh go. did. He built altars in the house of Yahweh, of which Yahweh said, "In Jerusalem shall my name be forever." I guess I'm assuming these are altars to other people, mm. other gods. He built altars for all the host of the sky, the hoopos. <laughs> In the two courts of the house of Yahweh, he also made his children to pass through the fire Whoa. in oh, the yeah. valley Whoa. of the son of again, Hinnom. Again, the, the hot, that. Were hot coals. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Actually, hold on. I might be changing my tune on this guy. And he practiced sorcery and used enchantments. Badass. And practiced sorcery. It's, cool. That's twice. Heck yes. He practiced sorcery and used enchantments and practiced sorcery and dealt with those who <laughs> had familiar spirits and... Wait, he did sorcery twice? twice? He did oh my sorcery God, twice. Who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> and dealt with those who had familiar spirits and with wizards, colon. Okay, so he's basically a wizard, Harry. He's a wizard, Harry. Yeah, so yeah. Cool. got it. Okay. He worked much evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. Love it. This guy sounds awesome, though. <laughs> he sounds really I feel like, yeah, it's like the really pendulum cool. swung really hard the other way. If Hezekiah yeah. was just like, you know, Yahweh's doormat, Manasseh mm-hmm. is, is like, I'm going to be a freaking wizard. Screw you, Yahweh. Wow. Okay, he set the engraved image of the idol, which he had made, in the house of God, of which God said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from off the land which I have appointed to your fathers, if only they will observe to do all that I have commanded them, even all the law and the statutes and the ordinances given by Moses. So, so. maybe he got like his Hogwarts acceptance letter really early in life, and he was just like, sorry, <laughs> like I can't not do this. It was delivered by a hoopo. There you go. Oh, in that in that, that area, maybe fewer owls, more hoopos. Exactly, so, right. yeah. Yeah, I mean, right. he had to do it. Okay. I mean, he was 12 when he became king. Exactly. Isn't that about the age when it's 11, kids started going oh, yeah, to Hogwarts? But, yeah. You know, okay. Yeah, basically. Yeah, there you go. All right. Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem seduced. so that they did evil more than did the nations whom Yahweh destroyed before the children of Israel. Oof, oof, oof. Children's. All right, that was my mistake. That's not, that's not the World English Bible's mistake. That's mine. Yahweh spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they gave no heed. Therefore, Yahweh brought on them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh in chains Ah. and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. When he was distressed, he begged Yahweh his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Okay, everyone, please vote on your phones whether you think 
You're always going to take pity on him or or punish him. For I this. think he'll punish him, but also <laughs> take pity because I mean, he lived for he ruled for 55 years. He's not that old yet. Yeah, I think he's going to punish him, but the punishment is going to extend to like either his son mm. or his grandson. Interesting. Mm. That's how we're going to justify the fact that he reigned for so long. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's true. We do have 55 years of this yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. All right. Verse 13. He prayed to him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Oh. So he freed him from wow, prison, what, I guess. What a nice guy. Babylon. Interesting. Yahweh. Then, then. Manasseh knew that Yahweh, he was God. Hmm. Now after this, he built an outer wall to the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entrance at the fish gate. Oh yeah, we all remember the fish gate. And he compassed Ophel about with it and raised it up to a very great height. And he put valiant captains in all the fortified cities of Judah. He took away the foreign gods and the idol. Oh, He like Whoa. totally... Had a change of heart. He, wow. turned, he turned over a Good new leaf. He's wow. like, I will no longer be a wizard. I'm going to be a muggle. I did not expect A this. voluntary muggle. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Do those exist in the Harry Potter universe? Uh, not that I know of. Kind of like, like the mendicant Jedis who are like, no, no more. Not that I know of. Hmm. But okay. wouldn't that be an interesting storyline? At least some fan fiction. I'm sure it would. That would yeah. be. I don't think J.K. Rowling is really... A person that we should consult anymore. So whatever <laughs> she created something that's bigger than herself, we can play in that world. That's true. Still. Right. That's true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we will just not respect any of her wishes about that world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. Uh, verse fifteen. He took away the foreign gods and the idol out of the house of Yahweh and all the altars that he had built in the mountain altars? of the house of Yahweh, altars, <laughs> and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. Mm. He built up the altar of Yahweh and offered thereon sacrifices of peace offerings and of thanksgiving and commanded Judah to serve Yahweh, the God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people sacrificed still in the high places, but only to Yahweh, their God. Oh, okay. I don't know. God hates high places, but they're worshiping him in the high places. I don't know. Must have been some mixed emotions for Yahweh there. Yeah. Now, yeah. the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer to his God and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel, behold, they are written among the acts of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how God was entreated of him and all his sin and his trespass in the places in which he built high places <laughs> and set up Asherim and the engraved images before he humbled himself, behold, they are written in the history of Hosei. Okay, hold on. Who? Because I want that history of Hosei because, first of all, this is what it's promising. We're going to give you the prayer that he himself prayed. So uh-huh. if you're ever in a tight spot where you know you have mm, screwed over Yahweh and you need to get out of it, you can pray this prayer. Also, if you want to know all the goss, all the stuff that he so did, much all the penthouse letters uh-huh. of how what a bad, bad, bad boy he was. Whoa. If you want to know where he set up the sex and religion shrines, also in case you just kind of happen to want to know just out of curiosity where those sex and, and religion shrines were, that's also in this very exclusive edition of the Book of Hosei, three payments of thirty nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it sounds so juicy, it right? Does. Yeah. yeah. I just looked it up and it's referred to as the sayings of the seers, which is translated from Hebrew to Hosei, the sayings of Hosei. Um, but it's a lost text. The only reference to it is in exactly. Second Chronicles. See? Is this right See? Here? Yeah. It's because someone was like, this is good shit. I got to keep this to myself. We got to get, <laughs> get rid of it right now. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so Manasseh slept with his father's and they buried him in his own house, and Amon, his son, reigned in his place. Amon was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned a two years oh. in Jerusalem. Okay. Eek. He did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. Of course. Yeah, obviously. Course. As did Manasseh, his father. And Amon sacrificed to all the engraved images with which Manasseh, his father, had made and served them. Terrible. He didn't humble himself before Yahweh, as Manasseh, his father, had humbled himself. But this same Ammon trespassed more and more. His servants conspired against him and put him to death in his own house. Jeez. Eek. But 
the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Amon, and the people of the land made Josiah, his son, king in his place. So we got a little tacked on epilogue just about this quick, Good. sad story of Manasseh's son, Good. Amon. Yeah, oh, goodness. Wow. And that's it right. for that chapter. All right. Yahweh's so fickle. He's so fickle he really with is. who can get away with what. I know. There's you know? no rhyme or reason, at least to us. I'm sure it's all part of God's plan. It's almost as though life is a little bit random, and sometimes bad people get good things and good people get bad things, and like there isn't someone actually controlling it or responding to it. It's almost like that. Like the woman who looks behind and yes. turned into a pillar of salt. Mm. Yes. It's almost as if someone read this history and then wrote the book of Job as a way to sort of question that very concept because that's what that whole book was about, remember? You know, I kind of question the fact that we, not question, but I wish that we had read it a little bit later in our journey. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Got it. I've I've really actually wanted to go back and read it again, but I know you two would revolt and throw me out the window (laughs) or into the river or something. Well, maybe if by the time we get to the end of this book and the people are just like clamoring and we're suddenly making do it again. And we're suddenly making so much money from ad revenue from this podcast or from our Patreon. We're making so much money. It would be stupid for us to not read the book of Job. Then maybe we'll go back and read the book of Job again. Okay. Great. Maybe maybe when we eventually finish all this and then we go on tour or something and do live shows, it's just all Job all the time. That, a good it's candidate only, to really pump people up at a live Job. show, you yeah. know? Yeah, everyone's like, okay. Or to inspire people to really drink a lot, you know? That, yeah. Ooh, okay, all right, I'm back in. The bars, the bars would be more likely to sponsor us if we're like, trust us. We're going to read this thing that's yeah. going to make them need some drinks. Just, yeah. just... Believe me. Yum. Oh, wow. Okay, before we go on to our last chapter of Second Chronicles for today, and then some Proverbs, we're going to take a quick break to talk about telling your friends about this show. T- tell them all about it. Tell them, shout it <laughs> from the rooftops, from the high places. Um, tell them all about the show, how great it is. Also, we would love to have you here at the live shows. It's a blast. We get more people every week, which is fantastic. And we would love for you to be one of those people. If you go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live, you can get information about our live shows. You can check us out every Thursday on Twitch. And uh, just tell your friends too to listen to the show. If you can't make it to the live shows, we get that too. And we would just love to to get those those listener numbers up so that we can eventually go on tour and read Job to you in person. Uh, Also, if you're able to contribute to the show uh, financially, it does really go a long way. Just a few dollars every month does help us quite a bit as a small podcast like this. If you go to patreon.com slash drunk Bible study, you can become one of our parishioners there. And as a thank you, we have things like early releases of episodes so you can know the hot gospel before all of your friends. Uh, we will personally toast you on the show. Not roast you, but toast you. Maybe we could have a higher tier for a roast boy. Uh, And Emily will share her drink recipes in our Patreon. So thank you all so much for your support. Yes. And we're back. Let's do this. Sorry. I did want to share with you a quick thing that I noticed during the intermission. Oh, so I was looking at the bottle of this 400 Conejos, Uh uh, which is the 400 rabbits uh, mezcal that I'm having. Yeah. And it has a little story on the back. Oh, what does it say? It's kind of in the vein of the stuff that we're learning about. So Great. So it's about like a weird rabbit king that led a rabbit army you're, to victory. N- you're not too far off. So what? according to native Mesoamerican religious traditions, the priests were the only ones who could establish a channel of communication with the gods. To achieve it, they practiced ritual drinking of beverages made from agave. Mm. Such drinks were exclusively for religious ceremonies and for the spiritual elite. The gods of the drinks were called collectively the Sentzon Totochtin, which means 400 rabbits in Nahuatl. Uh, The number 400 was synonymous with innumerable and uncountable. And it is believed that the spirit of the 400 rabbits carries on to this day in each bottle of this fine mezcal. That's why it's so spicy. It's very spicy, very smoky. smoky. yeah. I'm like, how how come you get up to 400 and then you're like, beyond that, we just, 
We're just uncountable. Who, yeah. could, who, who could bother? Who, but who like, we can get to 300. We can get to 200. 400. 400 mm-hmm. beyond, nah. Yeah, well, too many. Maybe it's that they they heard about what these ancient Jews were doing, where they were constantly being like, and there were 26 million soldiers. They're like, that's they're like, ridiculous. We're not doing that. <laughs> like, just like, no. Let's no just way. say 400 and call it good. Everything's 400 at that point. Yum. But I love that the drinks were exclusively for religious ceremonies and the spiritual elite. And I think both of those apply here. Mm. So To us, are we the spiritual elite? Yeah, this is a, is this no, a religious ceremony. No, I think these people we're speaking of are the spiritual elite, right? Oh, no, I was saying that I'm part of the spiritual elite. Oh, wow. Oh, good. You and just and included that we're doing yourself. a religious ceremony. Yeah. I'm shocked. Good. I'm, wow. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I always think of the spiritual elite as like the pastors that are like on the television, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Those guys. <laughs> Like a televangelist? Yeah, that guy. We're, I mean, we're Those guys. kind of, I mean, we're talking about the Bible online. It's like a That's television. True. I could put. It's basically the 2023 version I of the television. You're right. Yeah, yeah we could be doing it on TikTok, which probably. <laughs> yeah, probably is a thing. Oh, boy. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Well, all right. Well, let's move on to chapter 34. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh and walked in the ways of David his father and didn't turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, when he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the ashram and the engraved images and the molten images. They broke down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and the sun images that were on high above them he hewed down. Mm. And the ashram and the engraved images and the molten images he broke in pieces and made dust of them and strewed it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burnt the bones of the priests on the altars. Whoa, okay. So (laughs) it's so funny because I was literally just about to make the observation like this is rough if you're a priest to anyone but Yahweh during these times Mm. where maybe you have a job sometimes, you don't have a job other times. And this is extra rough if they're like, oh, actually, we're going to burn your bones on this altar also. Yeah. Rough time. Mm. And purged Judah and Jerusalem. So did he in the cities of Manasseh and Ephraim and Simeon? Simeon? Even to Naphtali, in the ruins round about, he broke down the altars and beat the ashram and the engraved images into powder and hewed down all the sun images throughout all the land of Israel and returned to Jerusalem. Wow. Now, in the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, and Maaseah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Johaz, Johaz, the recorder, to repair the house of Yahweh, the God, his God, the God, the, the, everyone's God. <laughs> they came to Hilka, the high priest, and delivered the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites, the keepers of the threshold, had gathered of the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, and of all the remnant of Israel, and of all Judah and Benjamin, yes, So I just wanted to share with this weird turn of phrase from the message here. And it says, first, they turned over to Hilkiah, the high priest, all the money collected by the Levitical security guards. Cut. Like, what? (laughs) What? Where did you think that was a good translation of anything that was happening just then? Uh, I don't know. Weird. So, and of all the remnant of Israel and of all Judah and Benjamin and of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, They delivered it into the hand of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of Yahweh, and the workmen who labored in the house of Yahweh gave it to mend and repair the house. Even to the carpenters and to the builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings and to Mm. make beams for the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. The men did the work faithfully, And the overseers of them were Jahath and Obadiah, the Levites, of the sons of Merari, and Zechariah and Meshulam, of the sons of the Kohlites, to set it forward, and others of the Levites, who were all skillful with instruments of music. Oh, how lovely. Oh, they're all, okay. Getting the band back together. Musical family, nice. 
Also, they were over the bearers of burdens and set forward all who did the work in every manner of service. And of the Levites, there were scribes and officers and porters, Sam Porter Bridges. When they brought out the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh, Hilka, Hil, Hilkia, the priest, found the book of the law of Yahweh given by Moses. Oh. The book of the law. Oh, this is when they yeah. found it in the closet? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's when they were cleaning out the temple and they just like, oh, wow, It's look at that. It's okay. the book of Moses. So wow. cool. Wow. Goodness. Hilkia answered Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. Hilkia delivered the book to Shaphan. Shaphan carried the books to the king. It was just like, yeah, you give this to this guy and then he gives that to you and then finally you get the bigger on sword. Shaphan carried the books to the king and moreover brought back word to the king saying, all that was committed to your servants, they are doing. They have emptied out the money that was found to the house of Yahweh and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and in the hand, into the hand of the workmen. Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has delivered me a book. Shaphan read therein <laughs> before side, the side king. Note, side note, the priest gave me a book. Isn't that so sweet? <laughs> I know. I'm just like, yeah, we got it. Thanks. It happened when the king had heard the words of the law that he tore his clothes. The king oh, commanded. Right, because this is when he's uh, like, oh my God, we've been not obeying wrong. any of this yeah. for so long. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah. The king commanded Hilkiah and ah. Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah. <laughs> Abdon, Abdon 5,000, yeah. Yeah, the son of Micah and Shaphan, the scribe. And Asiah, the king's servant, saying, Go you, inquire of Yahweh for me, and for those who are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of Yahweh that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the mm. word of Yahweh, to do according to all that is written in the book. Yeah, he's like, oh dear, we've been doing it wrong. Oh, you dear. need to read this and figure out all the stuff we need to do. That was the okay. assignment. I love that. He's like, I'm not going to figure it out. You do it. So Hilkiah and they whom the king had commanded went to Hulad, Hulada, Hulda, 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 yeah. Hulda, the prophetess, the wife oh. of Shalom, oh. the son to of a prophetess. Drink for a yeah. lady. My yeah. goodness, mm -hmm. the lady loves it. She approves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheers to the, the lady. Right, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tokath, the son of Hashra, the keeper of the wardrobe. Oh, now she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter. What? <laughs> I don't know. And they spoke to her to that effect. She said to them, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, Tell you the man who sent you to me. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil on this place and on the inhabitants of it, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah. Wait, did Yahweh just like get pissed because he was like, Yes, you haven't been following this. Or what just happened? I mean, that, that's probably it. Okay. See, Emily, you have learned. You've learned I don't so know. much. I'm just like uh, I'm just spitballing here. Like I don't know <laughs> what he's mad about this time. He's just mad all the time. Whatever. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods that they may might provoke me to anger with all the works in their hands. Therefore, is my wrath poured out on this place, and it shall not be quenched. Yeah. So she That's kind of just confirmed. It's like, yeah, you suspected that. Yahweh might be mad because we haven't been doing all these things. Oh, oh yeah. You're right. He's mad. Yeah. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of Yahweh, thus shall you tell him, thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, is touching the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you did humble yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and against the inhabitants of it, and have humbled yourself before me, and have torn your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says Yahweh. So is this like, this is probably told to kids to be like, so everyone else did badly, but this guy did good, and he felt remorse, and so he didn't get punished. Yeah, when he learned he, he was doing bad, he ripped yeah. his clothes, and so Yahweh's like, okay, I was okay. mad, but you know, I see you. I see You're you. all right. You're all right. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. 
Neither shall your eyes see all the evil that I will bring on this place. Oh, Wait, I see. is he going to kill him? He's like, I'm still going to destroy this place, but you're going to have a peaceful life first. Right, don't get me wrong. Then I'm going to mess geez. shit up. <laughs> and on the inhabitants of it, they brought back word to the king. The king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the house of Yahweh and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and the Levites and all the people, both great and small, and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of Yahweh. Mm. The king stood in his place and made a covenant before Yahweh to walk after Yahweh and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in the book. He caused all who were found in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. The inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, and the God of their fathers. Josiah took away all the abominations out of the countries that pertain to the children of Israel and made all who were found in Israel to serve, even to serve Yahweh their God. All his days, they didn't depart from following Yahweh, the God of their fathers. Dang, he did really good. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yep. He was the best boy. Turned that but ship God around. loved him. Yeah. <laughs> loved him. Loved him. <laughs> good for him. Well done. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Are you ready to... Totes. I'm so ready. I guess ready. one... Okay, first. Let's take a moment. Okay. Just let that all sink in. Okay. In hopes we do better on our quiz when that comes oh. up. That felt, like, meaningful to me, but... Like, there was story that happened. Yeah. Yeah. There was there was story, for sure. A lot more story than maybe we're used yeah. to getting at any given time. So that was nice. I'm into that. And with that, let's cleanse our palates. <sighs> Because it's time for some wisdom from the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. Proverbs 18. A man who isolates himself pursues selfishness and defies all sound judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own opinion. Hmm. I mean, that's See, I, I, that is some I'd truth right that. there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. When wickedness comes, contempt also comes, and with shame comes disgrace. The words of a man's mouth are like deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is like a flowing brook. So this thing that's made out of water, it's also kind of like this other thing that's made out of water. <laughs> Water. It's just water. So, that the words of a man's mouth are like deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is so like a much flowing water. No escaping brook. mouth it stuff. Make any sense. <laughs> to be partial to the faces of the wicked is not good, nor to deprive the innocent <laughs> of justice. Mm -mm. Okay, sure. A fool's lips come into strife, and his mouth Mouths invites stuff. beatings. <laughs> wow, jeez. His mouth, mouth invites, invites beating. beatings. Oh, oh man. Rough. Gracious. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are a snare to his soul. Ugh, the words... Okay. okay, here's a weird one. Get ready. <laughs> the words okay. of a gossip are like dainty morsels. Mm. They go down into a person's innermost parts. Oh, I mean... Okay. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Wait. So words of gossip, oh, so dang. hot goss, is so like... Hot. Dainty morsels that you num 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 num. They go down into your innermost parts, which I guess is like your stomach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weird. It is weird. Very Wasn't there a weird. book where they Very there was a weird translation of like dainties? Do you remember that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Your dainties. Oh yeah, the dainties. Yeah. <laughs> what was it even referring to? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. remember. All I remember was the dainties. I'm gonna keep going though. One okay. who is slack in his work is brother to him who is a master of destruction. Oh, here we go again. Yahweh's name is a strong tower. The righteous run to him and are safe. That's slightly different from, from mm. the original version, but that's okay. Yeah. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, like an unscalable wall in his own imagination. I wonder, is that like a burn on the rich, thinking that money is always going to protect them? Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah, that's the deal. All right. Yeah. I'm also, I just found that dainties is referenced 13 times in the Bible. Wow. Wow. So that's so Dedeker. Yeah. Yeah. Before destruction, the heart of man is proud, but before honor is humility. Mm. He who answers before he hears, that is folly and shame to him. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. truth. Mm. A man's spirit will sustain him in sickness, 
but a crushed spirit who can bear. The heart of the discerning gets knowledge. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Is mm. that a, another subtle, like, pro-bribing yes. <laughs> verse? Oh, yeah, yes. I do think it's pro-bribing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, give mm. some nice gifts. Yeah. And there'll be some. There'll be an opening at the restaurant yeah. you want to get a seat at, you know? like Surpri- yeah. Proverbs. Surprisingly pro-bribery. Yeah, yeah. He who pleads his cause first seems right until another comes and questions him. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I am. I just realized that if all this is supposedly written by Solomon, who was the king, it makes sense. He'd slip in a few like pro bribery. Right. He's like, I will. Hmm. I will respond to bribes. I, just so you this know. This is okay. Just so you know. Yeah. Gosh. The lot settles disputes and keeps strong ones apart. A brother offended is more difficult than a fortified city. Disputes are like the bars of a fortress. Huh. Okay. 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 A man's stomach is filled with the fruit of his mouth. With the harvest of his lips, he is satisfied. No idea what we're alluding to there. Do you think the harvest of his lips. Do you think you've become more numb to mouth stuff? I feel like they bother you less, or at least you react less. Than oh, is that you. true? I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. But it's been a lot of weeks yes, in a row. Yes, I know, of, of mouth nothing stuff. but mouth stuff. I don't like it. <laughs> but if I have to read, I just have to suck up and deal with it. I have no choice. Okay. Yeah. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, those who love yeah. it will eat its fruit. Oh, here we go. Whoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of Yahweh. Gosh. <laughs> I mean, what if the wife isn't good? But doesn't okay. matter. Don't be single. Right. Just don't be single. Right. Okay. okay. Got it. All Got right. it. The poor plead for mercy, but the rich answer harshly. That's true. Still true to this day. Mm-hmm. To this yeah. day. Thenceforth and henceforth. A man of many companions may be ruined, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. It's sort of about chosen family. Oh, like sometimes I like your that. friends are better than family. Mm, sure. It's true. Wow. Wow. Yay. Yay. Boy, oh boy, this book. <laughs> it's quite a, yeah. quite a thing. Proverbs is a lot weirder than I thought it was going oh, to be. Oh, so weird. Most. No one told me ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was because it's one that you you only hear in tiny snippets and it's just the ones people like or that supports whatever message, which we've kind of learned there's enough here that you can support pretty much anything that you're trying to say. Whether you're pro bribery, whether you're pro being rich, whether you're anti being rich, like you could, you could find, find something it. in Proverbs yeah. to back that up and just whip out that one. That's true. Out of context, and you're good. I mean, there is no context. There's no context to be out of. It's just random. It's I'm just really random surprised sentences. of the number of Christian weddings that I've been to that no one ever whipped out this whole whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. I would think that would be a shoe in. For a Christian mm. heterosexual wedding, right? Maybe they forget, mm. and maybe because no one has read this book, yeah. no one's read all exactly. of Proverbs. Like, no one has read all. Of <laughs> no Proverbs. one even knows this verse exists. Can I ask? <laughs> we're only on Proverbs eighteen. How many are there? Let's find out. Uh, Shall dear. we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably a lot. Let's there see. There are thirty-one. Okay, we're over halfway. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Gosh. Good. Yeah, I guess we're just going to keep doing these as we go into the New Testament, huh? Yep, we are. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to. It seems weird, but... No, I think we just should. I think we should not okay. overthink it and just do it. Okay, you're right. Okay. You're right. Yeah, it's not going to, like, be forever. I wonder how many... Wait, is Paul the first? No, let Matthew? Matthew. Yes. Uh-huh, yeah. You, you got, got it. it, well Matthew's done. the first. He's the first boy. He's the first boy. He's the first boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Should we finish this? Everyone next week, we're queeing. Yes. Yeah. And celebrating. Yeah. Having a, Should we have retrospect? I don't know. Well, speaking of which, celebration, which... actually, we do have a new parishioner oh. to celebrate. Oh, wow. So we do need to give a toast. Yes. Yeah, Yay. let's give yeah. a toast. Okay, so we need to give a wonderful DBS and DBS Plus toast and shout out to our new parishioner, Karina. Yeah, Karina. Pink. Thank you so much, Karina. So appreciate you choosing to support Yay. us. And uh, yeah, hope to see you at one of our live shows or one of our live streams one of these days. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And for all of you out there, thank you for joining us for Bible study today. Next week is it. 
for the Old Testament, which is truly remarkable. I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here on this journey with all of us. It's been phenomenal. If you want to join the audience in our live stream shows, follow us on Twitch at Drunk Bible Study or go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live. If you want even more Drunk Bible Study, including early releases, cocktail recipes, personal toasts on the show and more, become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunk Bible study. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and write us a nice review on iTunes, letting other people know what you like about it. You can also join fellow listeners in the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group or on our Discord server at discord.drunkbiblestudy.com. Follow us on Twitter at Drunk Bible Cast, on Instagram at Drunk Bible Study, or send us an email to info at drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, me, Emily Matlack. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album, Home of the, the, the. For more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. Yeah.